glory for every single thing that you've done for us so far. This song here, uh, it talks a little bit about God, on Jesus Christ, and a little bit of what He did. Just a little bit, because if, if we start talking about Christ, we won't finish the Amen. some of our construction it's affected some work here and put us in more expense some of these lights has been affected and our mics has been damaged but sometimes those things happen for Samuel chapter 20 verse 17 to 23 we'll read it uh, you don't need to stand I'll read it and you just follow along with me keep your Bibles open there um, this evening it says and Jonathan caused David to swear again because he loved him for he loved him as he loved his own soul then Jonathan said to David tomorrow is the new moon and thou shalt be missed because thy seat will be empty and when thou hast stayed three days then thou shalt go down quickly and come to the place where thou didst hide thyself when the business was in hand and shall remain by the stone Ezel and I will shoot three arrows on the side thereof, as though I shot at a mark. And behold, I will send a lad, saying, Go, find out the arrows. If I expressly say unto the lad, Behold, the arrows are on this side of thee, take them. Then come thou, for there is peace to thee, and no heart, as the Lord liveth. But if I say thus unto the young man, Behold, the arrows are beyond thee, go thy way, for the Lord hath sent thee away. Send thee away. And as touching the matter which thou and I have spoken of, behold, the Lord be between thee and me forever. I want to preach on tonight uh, the place of refuge uh, from 1 Samuel chapter 20. We'll have Brother Alex come and sing his second song here before I start preaching here tonight. Good song just now. Amen. Yeah. This 
song is kind of similar. This talks about us being lost and how we can turn to God. And whatever we are in our lives we're going through, we can always turn to God and you'll be there for us. Amen. Amen. I once was lost in sin's dark valley, drowning in life's angry sea, growing out, no one could help me, but Jesus loved us lifted in the air, though the storm church and doing a wonderful work um, at Lighthouse Baptist Church and uh, all of them reaching the age of marriage now so praise the Lord more fruits amen yeah. praise the Lord you know when, when you're a pastor and you stay faithful in a place for a long time fruits will bear amen. and this is one of the results here and He's not able to be in the country, but the work of God in Port Kaitum is going on uh, very good. And so praise the Lord. Thank you for being in God's house tonight. I won't be long here. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 20, as we get to this chapter, um, remember I'm doing a Bible study from, from the book of Samuel. We're going chapter by chapter. And right now we're in chapter 20. And as we reach a chapter 20, we come across David turning to Jonathan for help. In, in chapter 19, we saw Saul trying again to kill David, and maybe because Jonathan was used to bring some amount of peace between Saul and David, maybe that's the reason why David comes to Jonathan to seek his help. Maybe J David is hoping that Jonathan can bring back peace again between David and Saul. Now David, uh, it was the beginning of a new month of the year, and David was supposed to be at the king's table for a feast. But he decided to stay away. He decided not to attend this three-day feast with Saul. And he tells Jonathan to make an excuse for him. And what, he, he, he tells Jonathan, you go ahead. You talk to Saul. Make an excuse of why I couldn't attend the feast. And see if the possibility is you can bring back peace between me and David and Saul and so Jonathan agrees and Jonathan attends the feast David is hiding away 
in the field somewhere in a secret place and Jonathan attends the feast and he tries to mend things back between Saul and David and at the first when David was telling Jonathan you know there's not peace between me and Saul this man wants to kill me there is bitterness here right now Jonathan was denying it if you read chapter 20 Jonathan was saying that's not true my father doesn't want to kill you and I believe there can be peace between you guys. Let me go and talk to my father. And the Bible says Jonathan goes at the feast. And he realizes something here. He realizes what David was saying. That there is no peace between me and Saul. It's true. But he realizes something more serious. He realizes not only is there not peace at this moment. But there will never be peace between David and Saul and it breaks Jonathan's heart because not only does it affect not only are we as Christian are supposed to strive for peace but Jonathan realizes I would not be able to see David again and they were very close they loved each other and um, the Bible says Jonathan goes and he meets David and it breaks both of their hearts that they could not see each other anymore. David now could never come back to the kingdom. David could never come back close to Saul's family. David will never be able to see Jonathan again. Jonathan will never be able to see David again. And so they made a covenant. They made an agreement between each other. Jonathan and David said, if any one of us die, uh, after death, we'll try to take care of each other's family. So David agrees to do that. David agrees, if, if you, Jonathan, dies, I'll take care of your family. Jo Jonathan says, okay, David, if you die, I'll try to take care of your family. Both of them were married. Both of them had children. And, and they made that agreement. And they agreed. And they, they cried. And it broke their hearts. That peace could not take place. That unity could not take place between David and Saul. Um, I want to use this here. And I want to say, in our Christian journey, there will be times of disappointments. You're hoping things will work out. You're, you have that assurance that it may work out. But when you do try to make it work out, it does not. And I want to say, in a Christian journey, there will be lots of disappointments. There will be lots, lots of discouragements. And there will be times of sorrows. And there will be times of griefs. In this Christian journey, there will be times of carnal and satanic divisions. Times of insults and times of curses. Uh, if you read the story in chapter 20, Saul insulted his own son and said, You're not my son. How could my son love my enemy? You're not my son. And you, he, he literally said this. He said, and I'm just saying it, what he said. He said, you're not my son. You're the son of a whore. Hmm. He says that to his own son. And um, what I'm trying to say is, he insults his own son in a feast. Lots of people are there. And he insults him and he puts forth curses, not in decent languages, but curses and and um, bad things to happen to his own son. And I want to say in this Christian journey, there will be carnal and satanic divisions. The divisions that is taking place is not of God. It's of our own feelings. It is of Satan's uh, doing. And there are times of insult and curses, not because that is of the Lord, but that's of Satan. It's of our feelings. It's of our our carnal desires and when these things come the question is this where do we turn to Amen. and who do we turn to it. it is at this point when those things happen when when disappointments come and discouragements come and sorrows comes and griefs come and insults come and curses comes when we start asking the question, where do we turn to and who do we turn to? It is at that state 
that determines our state of being Amen. and our state of mind. And <clears throat> who we turn to when our hearts are broken and who we turn to when there are many disappointments will be determined how our hearts will be mended and the amount of peace that comes upon us. The decision to who to turn to, where to turn to, when disappointments come, and it's going to come. Yes, sir. When discouragements come, and it's going to come. When griefs come, and it's going to come. When insults and curses come, and it's going to come. The decisions that we make, who to turn to, where to turn to, when those times come, will be determined how much peace we will receive and how our hearts will be mended about that situation. Do you know God wants to mend our hearts in every situation? You know when discouragement and disappointments and griefs and sorrows and insults and curses come, you know what it does to our heart? It breaks our heart. It brings sorrow. It brings grief. Now who we turn to, where we turn to, when those things come, will be determined how our hearts are mended in those situations and how much peace we will receive in those situations. I want to talk about the place of refuge. And the word refuge in the Hebrew means this. Now you can't pull up a, an ordinary dictionary and find the meaning of these things. You have to have a Hebrew meaning. Remember the Bible, the Old Testament primarily was written in Hebrew and the New Testament primarily was written in Greek. And some of the Hebrew and Greek meaning of words are different from our ordinary meaning that we use today. The word refuge in the Hebrew means a very high and defended place above the attacks. The word refuge in the Hebrew means a very high defended place above the attacks. What is there on this earth? What is there on this planet earth that can lift us up high above the circumstances of disappointments and sorrows. What do you know of on this planet Earth that can lift us above difficulties, above discouragements, above disappointments, above insults and curses? What is there? I know people think it's alcohol and they turn to that and, then, and hope that that will lift them above their circumstances, but it does not. Some people turn to drugs and some people turn to immorality and some people turn for others for help and some people turn for uh, psychiatrists and, 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 and medicines for help. But I'm going to tell you something, the refuge of who we need to turn to, there is somebody that can lift us above all circumstances. But not just lift us above our circumstances, but to defend us. In those circumstances. Notice the word refuge means it's a very high place. But it's a very defended place. Above the attacks. What is there on this earth that will not just protect us. But defend us when attacks are being made upon us. God, the, the, the Hebrew meaning for re refuge is, it didn't say protect. It means to defend. Now defend and protect are very similar in meaning. But it's different. To protect means I'm sheltering you from attacks. To defend means I am driving the attacks away from you. Everybody get that? Yes, God did not promise to protect us only. And he does promise to protect us. But he promises here that he will be a refuge that means he will defend you. Amen. So when not only will you be lifted up above your circumstances, your difficulties, but God says while you're being lifted up, I will defend you. Amen. I will drive the enemy. I will drive away those attacks that is hurting you so that your heart can be mended in the situation. So that... Uh, an amount of peace will be received towards you so that you can be above the circumstances. What is there on this earth that can lift us 
high above our circumstances, but not just lift us up above them, but defend us. None but our heavenly Father. Amen. Look at Psalm 62, verse 7 and 8. There's none on this earth here. That, there's nothing on this earth here. There's no one. There's no amount of substance or materialism or wealth that can lift us and defend us above our circumstances. Amen. None but our heavenly Father. Amen. Verse 7 says in Psalm 62, it's on the screen. If you can't see it on the screen, turn to your Bibles. It says, in God is my salvation Amen. and my glory. The rock of my strength and my what? Refuge, Refuge is in God. Amen. Look at verse 8. Trust in him. And how many times? All, times? All times, he people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a what? Refuge, Refuge for who? Us. And then he says, Sila, meditate on that. Remember that. Let it be in your mind. Let it dwell in your heart. He says, don't forget that verse then. Let it stay in your heart. Don't forget it. Remember who is your refuge. Remember who you need to trust in at all times. And why you need to trust in him. In this chapter, we see some places that the Lord has set up. Where, we will, where, where he will work through to help us find refuge in him. Now remember, there is no place on this earth that can be our refuge like how God is our refuge. Everything on this earth here is imperfect. Nothing can help you the way God can help you. Perfect. Not even the house of God. The house of God is just a place. And the house of God cannot help you the way God can help you. Now, listen to me. The house of God, it should not be denied. But there is nobody else like God. There is nothing on the face of this earth that can be a protector, that can defend you. That can lift you up above any circumstances Amen. but your Lord. Lord. And Psalm 62 tells us the truth. It is God who is our refuge. Amen. It is He who we need to trust in. Praise the Lord. But let me say this. In chapter 20, God mentions some places that He will walk through. That will encourage. He will use these places to channel us to find refuge in him. Everybody get it? Amen. It's not that we can find refuge in these places because the only person we can find refuge in is in the Lord. But God will use some places. He will set up some places that will channel us to find refuge in him. And I want to show you at least one this evening. Number one, the refuge and all these are found in chapter 20 now. Number one, the refuge. I'm sorry. The refuge of God's lovely house. Amen. The refuge of God's lovely house. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse 1. It says, And David fled from Nihon in Ramah, and came and said before Jonathan, What have I done? What is my iniquity? And what is my sin before thy father that he seeketh my life? Now, look at the first part of verse 1. It says, And David fled from Nioth in Ramah. If you remember in chapter 19, we said the word Nioth. Nioth means a relationship that praises God. But look, it goes farther. It also means in the Hebrew, a celebration of praises. In where? In the lovely house of God. Where do we find David running from? From this very place. Did you guys see that in verse 1? Yes, and David fled from Nioth. If you remember, in chapter 19, in the last message we preached last week, or the week before, Wednesday, no, Sunday night, we said that David and Samuel we talked about four relationships that was found under attack in chapter 19. And the last one was David and Samuel. 
the Christian with the man of God, the pastor, the leader. And he said when they came together, they went to Nayoth. And that relationship between you and the man of God, we are to find us, our relationship between you and your pastor, always praising God. And we said that Saul sent messengers to attack David while he was there, remember? He sent three groups of messengers to attack David. And every group turned to prophesying. They couldn't touch David. Then Saul himself realized that these men can't do it. So I'm going to go myself. And he goes. And the Bible says he began to prophesy. None of these people could have touched David. It seems like even though they were coming to the very place where he dwelt to attack him, it seems like even though they were right by his door side, it seems like David was lifted above the attacks. It seems like all these people who were trying to come to attack him, it seems like God was just driving them away to a different direction. None could touch him. Now my question is, if God was protecting David in Iowa, why do we find the very first verse in chapter 20, he's running from there? Why do we find David, a faithful man of God, running away from his pastor, from the man of God? Why is he severing that relationship? What fault is there? What problem is there? I mean, listen to me, listen how um, backward this sounds. He runs to Jonathan and says to Jonathan, what have I done that is so bad to hurt your father? But what was the problem between you and Samuel that you're running from him? If you know God was protecting you there, why are you not staying there? Amen. See, sometimes even very faithful people of God, after a numerous amount of attacks, fear begins to come into our heart. And we end up making decisions that we should not make. And one of the worst decisions we can ever make is we walk away from our relationship between you and the man of God. We think that it's not important to stay connected. It's not important to be under the man of God. Amen. We walk, and I understand some people, God will call you away and send you off to a different ministry, but there are people who walk away. Amen. They leave that relationship because of their own feelings. And, and not only does Nayot means uh, uh, that relationship praises God, but Nayot means a place of celebration of praise in the heart in the lovely house of God. Um, <clears throat> which other place can help us find refuge in our Lord in our difficult circumstances than in the Lord's house? Amen. The church itself is not a place of refuge, but it's a channel in which we can find refuge in the Lord. Amen. We saw that as long as David was with the prophet Samuel and Nahum, God defended David from all those who opposed him. Especially from Saul. But God was defending you. God was lifting you up in that place. Why leave? It's our feelings that makes us leave. We don't feel that it's, more, it's safe here. And God is protecting you all the time. So if it's not safe there, why go back to meet Saul? Um, sometimes when troubles come, to the very place where we thought we can find safety, we start becoming fearful. And believe we need to find another safe place. But the safest place is the Lord. And he said, as long as you can praise me in my house and among my people, you will find refuge in me. And I want to show you some things here just now. How God can use the house of God as a place to... Channel us to find refuge in Him. Amen. When we think, listen, when we think of every song that is sung in this church to praise the Lord, and all the people singing in unison, you know what we see there? A celebration 
of praise. Amen. You ever think of the words that you sing unto the Lord Amen. when you come to church? Amen. It's not a song about you. Amen. It's not a song about your accomplishments, your achievements. It's a, it is songs written to lift the name of God up. Amen. Now if you come to church and you're not focusing on those songs, whose fault is that? We come here and we're singing these songs. Now, hear this. When you sing, and you sing, and you sing, and a group of us are singing here, you know what we have? We have a celebration of praise. praise Lord. And God says, when we find this place, even if the attacks, the insults, the curses, the disappointments, the discouragement, even if they come to that place itself, don't you flee from there. Isn't that where it was coming? Saul was sending messengers to Nioth. Saul himself went there to attack Saul. Even if the attacks come to that place, this is the house of God. And as long as you're found praising God in his house, God will use your praises Unto him to lift you above your circumstances. Amen. And not only that, he will use your praises unto him to defend you from your difficulties. This is the lovely house of God. Whether it's under a house, whether it's under a shed, whether it's under uh, a tree, whether it's in somebody's house or in a building what does it matter as long as we together are celebrating in praising God that is what's lovely it's not the building that we ought to look upon and say oh how lovely the building is we ought to walk away from church and say how lovely it was tonight Amen. to praise God Amen. in music Amen. in testimonies Amen. How lovely it was to see people serve the Lord together. Yeah. And sometimes this is what brings fear in us. Because we think this building, this concrete, this wood, and this shelter. And because it's called a church. We should be safe from our problems here. But troubles will come to the very doorsteps of this church to you. Disappointments will come to the very doorsteps of this church to you. But I tell you, as long as you are found Amen. praising God Amen. among God's people, Amen. God will lift you above Amen. all circumstances. Amen. Not only that, defend you and drive those things Praise away. Amen. We are never to be found fleeing from the place of the celebration of praise to God, the lovely house of the Lord. When we think, when we think of the preaching of God's word, how it's being used Amen. to break our selfish, That's carnal right. ways, Preaching. so that we can be spiritual. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's what preaching ought to do. Preaching. It ought to attack our selfishness. Amen. It ought to attack our carnal ways. Amen. It ought to attack our feelings that are That's opposing right. that which is spiritual. And when we think of preaching and how it's breaking away, it's being used to break away our selfish carnal Amen. ways and seeing people agreeing, the majority of people Amen. agreeing to that, coming down and praying and seeking God's help. I'll tell you what that is. That's a celebration of praise to yeah. God. That's a lovely praise to God. Uh, look, look what it says here in Psalm 35, verse 17 and 18. It says, Lord, how long will thou look on? Rescue my soul from their destructions, my darling from the lions. Look at verse 18. I will give thee thanks in the what? Great, Great congregation. Amen. I will praise thee among how much people? Awesome. Much people. Amen. You know, when, 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 um, we ought to be found. Praise in God. Amen. Among God's people. That's right. Regardless of what's going on in our life. Look at uh, chapter 66, Sam. 
chapter 6, 8 and 9 says, Oh, bless our God, ye people. Notice he's talking in general to the people of God. And make the voice of his praise to be heard. We ought not to be singing where we cannot be heard. Amen. We ought not to be, how can we celebrate praise? God says we need to be celebrating praise. And you're nowhere to be found. Oh, you're nowhere, and you're not to be heard. I, that's why I can't understand some men. I understand you ladies. You might not, you might not feel the boldness to say amen. I can't understand you men being quiet. Preach it. You're not to be heard. That's right. Why, why is all people shouting amen? Mature people, adult people. Amen. And you know what the problem is? It's a lot of young people. And if you young men don't step out, and celebrating, praising God, and 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 being heard. Amen. What are we leading people to? How we ought to be leading people in the house of God That's to right. celebrate in praising God. Praise How God. can we lead people to something like that if you yourself mm -hmm. cannot be heard on your own accord? That's right. Preach it. I am shy. Wait till you get angry. That's right. Wait till somebody ruffles your feather. And hear the words that are coming out of your mouth. See if people can't hear you then. People hear you on Facebook too. That's right. Or WhatsApp or whatever nonsense there is out there. That's right. They hear your comments, they hear your views. But when it comes to praising God, you cannot be heard. Amen. You're quiet. You're speechless. Preach it. Hey, remember the preaching of the Word of God? It's to break our selfishness. Amen. Our carnal ways. <clears throat> uh, verse 9. Look at it. 6, 6, 8, and 9. Which hold it our soul in life and suffer it not our feet to be what? Ooh. I tell you, God wants to lift you. Amen. He, he wants to lift you above your circumstance. Trouble is going to come. Sorrows is going to come. Insults and curses is going to come. Griefs are going to come. But God says, you find refuge in me. Amen. I will lift you above all that. Even right. if it comes to the very doorsteps That's right. of the house of God. I will lift you. Not only will I lift you, I will defend you there. But I got to hear you. Amen. I got to see you. I got to hear you. Amen. That's why you see so many people coming to church and they still leave discouraged. Preach it. They cannot be heard. That's right, preach it. They go back home and instead of praising God, what a wonderful service. Amen. Boy, the service was long. That's right. The pastor was only talking throughout all those songs. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to lift people to praise God. Amen. And I, sometimes, sometimes you find people aggravated at that. You're trying to encourage people to praise God. You're trying to encourage people to speak up. You're trying to encourage people to sing up. And they find out of something aggravating. Oh, we spent so long singing. What's wrong with us? Preach it. Amen. I, I was reading a story to our children of Noah Webster. He said when he was just a little boy, he went to church, and it seems like the church wouldn't end. He said after several hours of the pastor's preaching, then he finally realized the sermon was coming to an end. The pastor just stood up there and preached for hours. We have a short little service of praising God. That's right. And we find it too long. That's right. Compared to, to other places or previous times. Yeah. Or compared to what we do carnally. Amen. Yeah. The amount of things we involved ourselves in. You're just trying to compare it. Eh? Look at Hebrews chapter 2. Verse 12 and 13 it says. 
I will declare thy name unto my veteran. In the midst of the what? Amen. Will I sing praise unto thee? Amen. He says, I am going to do it. Amen. I am going to declare your name, God, Amen. among the veteran. That's right. I'm going to sing about it. I'm going to declare it. I'm going to sing praises in the church. Look at verse 13. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God had given me. Hey, let me say this and I'm done. Listen. Praising God in his house and among our veteran is a place that God has set up to find refuge in him. In doing this, we will be lifted up above our circumstances and our Lord will defend us. Amen. Hear me. Nayot not only means a place where we celebrate in praise of the Lord, but it also means to find rest and to make this place our habitation. Hear me. We need to make praising God our habitation, our state of dwelling. In other words, let let it be every situation we're found in to be praising God. This is how we find refuge in the Lord. Let, let the state of praising God be in you. Everywhere you go, everything you do. We ought never to be negative towards the things of God. That's right. And how God how great God is. We ought to find praise to God in every situation. Now means. This is a place that I like being in. This is a state I like to be in. I want to be in that state where I'm constantly praising God. Constantly lifting and declaring the name of God. Now listen to me. Praising God does not mean thanking God. God also says we ought to be thankful in every situation. So don't say, oh, how can I... I I'm trying to be thankful, but it's different. Being thankful is also wonderful, but praising God means I'm lifting God's name up. I'm saying something good about God, how good He is. God, you're such a merciful God. You're such a wonderful God. You're such a, a, an amazing God. You're, you're, you're full of wisdom. You're full of truth. You're full of discernment. You're full of understanding. You always know. Your ways are always right. Yeah. What am I doing there? Did you hear me say, God, thank you? No, God says, be thankful in everything. But I just praise the Lord. Hey, let me, let me say this. That's something missing in our lives. Preaching. That's right. I mean, you check our, you check our day today. Amen. Just check our day today. Preaching. We're so occupied with our job. Our minds are so focused on that. Sometimes our minds are so focused on all kinds of things around us. Sometimes we're so occupied with everything around us that we didn't even take a moment to say, God, you're such a great God. You're, you're, you're a wonderful God. See, we're always running from this. We look at David and say, how can a spiritual man do this? And we're doing the same thing every day. Amen. We go to work and we run away from praising God. We begin our day, the sun rises, and we say, God, thank you for waking me up this morning. And we run the rest of the day. We run away from praising God. And then, disappointments come. Discouragements come. Insults come. Sorrows come. Griefs come. Curses come. And then those things just knock you down. That's right. Sure. When God could have used the praises that was coming out of your mouth to lift you above Appreciate. the circumstances Appreciate. and to defend you. That's right. Yeah. That's what he wants to do. That's why we're praising God all the time. Amen. So we can always have Him as a refuge. That's right. <clears throat> this is how we find refuge in the Lord. The Lord uses our praises unto Him to defend us in our difficult circumstances. He uses our praises unto Him 
to lift us up high above our circumstances. Why then? My question is, why then do we find David fleeing from this place? And why do we find ourselves? If this can, if, if, if praise in God can defend us, can lift us above our circumstances, why are we avoiding this, this place? Why are we avoiding praising God in his house among the veteran? Yeah. Why are we avoiding praising God uh, as a habitual process That's in our right. life? That's right. You know, when we are found fleeing from the house of God or the place of God, we normally find ourselves fulfilling our fleshly desires. Amen. When David was found, I don't have time to read the scriptures here, you could read it, but when David was found fleeing from Nayoth, we find David seeking aid from Jonathan. And you know who he's supposed to be seeking aid from? From God. Amen. We find Jonathan lying and encouraging Jonathan. I'm sorry. We find David lying. Remember he said, go tell your father that I cannot come to the feast because I have to go back home to Bethlehem to be with my father and my brothers and have a feast with them. And it's true, they probably did invite him. But you know where David was? He was nowhere near Bethlehem. He went to a field not far from where Saul was and hid away for the next three days. He was lying. You know when you run from praising God, all you can do is fulfill your flesh now. Amen. But, but if I can find myself praising God all the time, Amen. I will find very little time to fulfill my carnal desires. That's right. Not only is he from lying, he's from encouraging Jonathan to lie. Um, we find David lying and encouraging Jonathan to lie about going to a feast in Bethlehem with his family when he never intended to go nowhere. We find David lifting himself up in pride. If you look back at verse 1 again, he said, What have I done? What is my iniquity? What is my sin before thy father that he seeketh my life? He goes to Jonathan and says, I, I don't do anything wrong. How can I, what did I do to hurt Saul that he wants to kill? You notice what he's doing? He's, he's making himself look good and sound good before Jonathan. That's what we call pride. See, when you're not found praising God, you're found lifting up yourself. Amen. That's right. You're found defending your righteousness. Amen. You're found lifting up yourself among the veteran. Yeah, I don't do this. And I don't go there. I don't find myself doing that. And I don't find myself watching it. And I don't find myself listening to that. And I believe we ought to defend ourselves from certain things so people can know. But most of the time we find ourselves defending ourselves. Then we are found or heard praising God. Amen. We are never to leave the place of God's house. Where we can celebrate praise unto God among the veterans. And we are to make praise in God our state of dwelling. Amen. Praise God in every situation. That's right. God then will use your praises unto him to lift you above your difficult circumstances. And will use your praises unto him to defend you in your difficult circumstances. Let's all bow our heads, close our eyes, please. Father, we thank you for the word of God tonight. We thank you for being in your house this, this Wednesday evening. What a wonderful service as we sang on to you and praise your name. We thank you, Lord, for the specials and the scripture Amen. songs. And we thank you for the word of God that you gave me for tonight. Amen. And Lord, I pray, as the word of God has gone forth, your people will use it to allow them to draw close to you. To allow your word to plant in their heart. And bear the fruit that needs to be bared. My Lord, I pray they will not make it fall to the ground. Bless every decision that is about to be made here tonight. And rebuke Satan and his workers from hindering your work and will. In Jesus' name, with our heads bowed and eyes closed, please. With our heads bowed and eyes closed. How many of you say, Preacher, I'm here tonight. And if I were to die... I am 100% sure heaven is my home. I know Christ as my Savior. 
I have no doubts about going to heaven. Would you raise your hand so we can rejoice with you? Oh, praise the Lord. I see many hands all across the church tonight. Praise the Lord. Thank you. You can put on your hands, please. With our hands bowed and eyes closed, please. There's some people here tonight. You couldn't raise your hand just now. Maybe you're here tonight and you said, Preacher, if I were to die, I am not 100% sure that I would go to heaven. You, you have some doubts about going to heaven. But you would like to make sure of that tonight. And you would like me to pray for you about that. Would you raise your hand so I could pray for you? Anyone like that? So preacher, if I were to hear, if I was to die, I am not 100% sure heaven is my home. But you would like me to pray for you. Would you raise your hand so I can pray for you? Anyone like that tonight? Anyone? Say, preacher, if I were to die, I'm not sure heaven is my home, but you'd like me to pray for you. I, I see that one hand being raised. I see that one hand being raised. Thank you. No one else looking around. I thank you for raising your hand. I thank you for allowing the Lord to speak to your heart. But our heads bowed and eyes closed. Say, preacher, I want to join this one person. I, too, am not sure if I die, I would go to heaven. But you would like me to pray for you. Would you raise your hand? I want to join them. Anybody else? How many of you say, Preacher, I have been saved, but since I've been saved, I've not been baptized. But I want to obey the Lord and do that. Would you raise your hand? You've been saved, but not baptized, but you want to obey the Lord and do that. Let's all stand, please. Let's all stand at this moment. I'm not going to ask you to come forward to the altar here tonight. I'm going to ask you right where you are, right where you're standing, to go to the Lord and talk to him about what God's word spoke to your heart about. I want you to spend some time. I want you to pray. I want you to be sincere. And talk to the Lord. I'll be quiet for a moment. To give you the opportunity to pray. I want you to talk to the Lord now. My Lord, I thank you for all that is in church tonight. God, I thank you for the one man that rose his, raised his hand to be saved. And I pray he will get to know you as Savior tonight. Bless his soul when he talks to him. And I also pray for everyone that is here tonight. I'm not sure what decisions they're making. But I thank you that they are making some spiritual decision tonight. And I pray you help them, bless them, and encourage them. I pray, Lord, that every one of us will not be found lifting ourselves up among the veteran, but be found and heard lifting you up and praising your name so that we can find refuge, protection, shelter, help in, the time, in difficult times. My Lord, help, bless, and encourage us. And as we make our way home, bless us with safety, watch over us and protect us, and bless our services this week here, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen.